And as the ordinance states, I believe roads cannot be constructed in that area, uh, only utilities if needed. So we have uh, taken that information and worked to redesign the road. It also, I believe, I think makes for a better project for a couple of reasons. One, we end up with less roads. The project goes from what could have been 19 lots down to 13 lots. Uh, there's less wetland disturbance. When we originally started the project, the road was going to come down through here. There's a, a town sewer that runs down through here. And there's also a, a stream that comes through here. And there's a wetland that we identified down in this area. It's an RP2 wetland. And if we follow the original road alignment, we were going to go through a good chunk of that wetland and we would be over 4,000 square feet of disturbance. We're now able to go down to less than 1,000. I believe it's somewhere in the range of 900 square feet of wetland disturbance. So uh, not only do we shorten the length of the road, reduce the number of lots, we develop a design more responsive to the, to the site and the wetlands that were on the site. And that's one of the reasons why we started this back in June. It's taken us this long to get to this point. We've spent a lot of time couple of meetings with you folks, kind of updating you on the project, trying to work through this some time with uh, the applicant's attorney, the town's attorney, and we'd also like to thank Maureen and the uh, town's engineer and the public works director for taking some time to meet with us on the site, spend a lot of time looking at the site, the access, the locations of it. Uh, we actually met with the uh, uh, public works director, the town engineer, and the town planner right out at the entrance. Uh, as we were getting ready to move forward with this design with the specific intent to go over the location, uh, Joel, uh, through Maureen, also contacted the police chief and he provided a letter which is in your packet um, looking at that whole intersection. And we feel comfortable that we have a good location for the project. In addition, uh, Joel has spent some time approaching utility companies uh, specifically sewer. Uh, Portland Water District handles the sewer and the water in this area and also the Public Works uh, Director Bob Malley uh, to obtain letters and have a chance to look at the site uh, because there was some concerns brought up originally about sewer capacity in the general area at uh, the workshop meeting so there was some time spent looking at that and as a result uh, the Water District has looked at it, uh, Bob's looked at it and both feel confident that there is capacity uh, for this project. And those letters are also part of your, your packet and the record information. Um, again, uh, the wet, uh, let me expand on the utilities. Uh, because we're not, although we're not putting the roadway through this buffer, uh, the water district only has a two inch water main on Woodcrest Road. They've ran an eight inch water main down to where Hemlock Hill Road ends now. They've requested that we run the water main, extend it from Hemlock Hill, bringing it down and terminating it uh, down, into, down into the site here. That does a couple of things. Uh, one, it provides better water surface to the lots and provides for fire protection so we can put some hydrants in. Um, so that was a request of the water district. So we are asking um, as part of the uh, project, the resource protection permit for a utility crossing through that buffer. That's all that would go through it. There would be no road construction through there. Uh, there would also be a sewer, uh, private force main sewer, for lots one and two that would go through that, paralleling the water main in that same area through there um, so that it can come up to the turnaround here and then have gravity feed down to the town sewer. Uh, the town owns this lot here, which is a, has a pump station on it. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we spent a lot of time with the wetlands. Mark Hampton from our office has uh, Phil delineated those wetlands. Uh, and a report is included in your packets. Uh, one thing we will be doing uh, with this project is we do have to file a permit by rule application with the state for the stream crossing in this location here. But that would be the only permitting we need to seek. Originally, if we'd gone with the original design, we'd had to gone through a much more extensive permitting and because it would have been more wetland disturbance. So we think this is a better approach to the project. Um, during this process, too, in your packets, there's a letter that uh, Joel actually sent to all of the abutters in the area and just 
taking the opportunity to try to notify them of his intent for the project to see if he could get any feedback uh, from the neighbors. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think, Joel, the, 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 some of the responses you got mostly were there was a few people called who were interested in the lot. <laughs> so those were the calls he got back. But that letter's in there. Again, he was trying to uh, make some dialogue with the neighbors. And I know that there's been a couple of submittals into uh, Maureen's office uh, regarding the project. And we will certainly take a look at those um, as we move forward with the project. Uh, one other item that the applicant is proposing to do is the applicant would like to offer what was one of the historic parcels to the town. It's about 11,700 square feet. It's this parcel right here. And the intent would be to uh, offer that to the town uh, for open space purposes as part of the project. Um, we will be sending a letter on to the town manager's office. My understanding is, and if I'm wrong here, help. Pardon me? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so that it can go on to the council to see if they would be interested in that parcel. So we're going to forward that letter and uh, see if that's possible. Um, it's the applicant's intent, and I, I think it's evident by some of the past projects uh, Fitzpatrick Associates has done to, to take this property and develop some lots and houses that are of the character in keeping with the general area. Um, the lot sizes are in the range of 10,000 square feet up to about 36,000 square feet in size. Uh, the lots of record on the original subdivision plan were 10,000 square feet. There are some of the lots we will hold as the original lots of record. Some of the other lots as part of this amended subdivision we're actually combining to make larger lots in there. One thing that the applicant has done is taken a look at the neighborhood and the general area to look at the different lot sizes to see what, sizes, what size of lots were in the general area. And we will turn this in. Uh, actually, I think Maureen was provided a copy, but we'll provide additional copies to the board. But the applicant has taken a look and done some research. And the bulk of the lots in this area are ranging in size from about 6,000 square feet up to 15,000 square feet, if that's correct. So we think that we're approaching this in the right way to develop a project that's in keeping with the general area. Um, as part of the project, we are asking for uh, a few waiver requests. Uh, the first, and those are outlined in the packet in the cover letter. Those ra waiver requests include a waiver for the subdivision mapping scale requirement. Um, let me turn to that for a moment, and I'll read it to you. I believe the, um, the, the subdivision requirements are for a scale of 1 inch equals 40 feet. We would like to submit the subdivision at 1 inch equals 60 feet for the simple reason that it will all fit on one plan for recording purposes. Um, if we went to the 1 inch equals 40 feet, the plan would be broken into multiple plans. Um, it, still very readable and it provides it all on one plan so we think it um, will meet the intent of the ordinance. The applicant is also, my understanding is, needs to request a waiver for item 24 of the subdivision submittal requirements which is a community impact analysis. This is a requirement of major subdivisions. Uh, the applicant is requesting this waiver uh, since this wasn't originally an approved subdivision plan actually moving forward with six less lots than the original subdivision would have allowed for. Um, so we would be asking a waiver, the board to consider a waiver for that item. Uh, the other one I think we actually talked about at the workshop meetings, and this is a waiver to the road construction requirements. Uh, the applicant will build the road to the ordinance widths, to the depths for the gravel subbase, and the pavement thicknesses will have curbing and catch basins, but we would like to eliminate the sidewalk on it. Um, there are no sidewalks in the area. Uh, if we did a sidewalk, we'd essentially have one short segment of sidewalk in the development, basically going nowhere and are connecting to any other system. So we would be asking to, um, oh, for a waiver on that so that we develop the road similar to the area. Uh, the applicant is also uh, asking for a waiver 
to the local road construction standards to construct a private roadway extending from the end of Hemlock Hill to Lot 2. Um, I believe that we need to ask for that to reduce the travel width to 14 feet. So that it's basically a private driveway going to Lot 2. And hence, that's part of the um, submission that we made for approval for a private access waiver. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I said that wrong. Public, no private access waiver. <laughs> um, so those would be the items we would be asking the board to consider. Again, I think the permits we're looking for is one, an amended subdivision plan, uh, two, the private access waiver for lot two, and three, the resource protection permit to install the utilities through the buffer. We won't be impacting the wetland. Uh, we're just going to be installing utilities through a small corner wedge of that buffer that's in this area here. Here's the wetland. Here's the line that's for the buffer, and utilities would come through there. With that, that I think that brings me current um, since our last time that we were before the board, and if appropriate, we would uh, ask the board to consider looking at the plan for completeness tonight, and if needed, ranging for a site walk or a public hearing. Thank you. Matter is open to discussion from the board. Maureen, do you have any comments? Uh, I, I think what I've tried to do very quickly, and what you have in your package is a summary completeness checklist, uh, and there's one for every type of the review. So the last three pages, um, <coughs> you have one for subdivision review. Then following that is one for uh, resource protection permit. And then the last one is for the private access way review. Um, the town engineer and I have both reviewed these. I think the main issue that's missing is that we have not uh, received a survey that has been stamped by a surveyor and the surveyor's name is on it. It just hasn't been stamped. This one, I believe, has. You're right. What about the question mark on temporary markers? Uh, on temporary <laughs> markers, the ordinance requires that uh, the applicant set out markers as requested by the board, but typically, sorry, typically that's arranged when uh, the board has scheduled a site visit. So once you schedule a site visit, you usually ask for things like putting a stake in the center line of the road and then the applicant will go out and do it. So that's why there's a question mark there. Yes, we'd be more than happy to do that. Mr. Emery. I'd like to make a motion. Yes, please. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for subdivision amendment, a resource protection permit, and a private access permit for the previously approved Hemlock Hill subdivision located at the end of Hemlock Hill Road in Woodcrest Road be deemed complete. <clears throat> Second. Thank you, Mr. Parkhurst. Any discussion of the motion? Yeah, one question. Mr. Parkhurst? Uh, for Maureen. What is a deed restriction description? Number 13B under subdivision checklist. Yes. Um, in the applicant's uh, materials, I think there was a rec view, there was a, a promise that you were going to be doing something in terms of deed restrictions for how construction was going to occur on the lots. And that is, it's typically what we might call um, association agreement in other places. Or restrictive uh, covenant. Restrictive covenant, yes. exactly. That's what I was searching for. So it's not something that's required, okay. but if you are going to do it, it's requested that you provide that document to the board for review. Thank you. You're Before we vote on this motion, uh, may I suggest we simply go through the three pages, the three different applications that are requested, and see if there are any questions or discussion? First being preliminary subdivision review completeness checklist, section 16-2-4. There are only two waivers on the entire page. Any concerns or questions? Consider that complete. Resource protection permit, 14 conditions. There's only one waiver asked for. Any concerns or questions? <clears throat> Private access way review, completeness checklist. 
there are no waivers asked for. And I believe the final plans will be signed and stamped. Yes, that's correct. Any further discussion of the motion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. And concerns for a site walk? The applicant has agreed to stake it out and show us where the right of ways are and corner lines of the various lots. All we need is a date. <clears throat> I'd like to do it this Saturday, mm. except that it, is it supposed to snow? Mm. The weather is against us on the weekend, I'm pretty sure. A major weather event yeah. on Saturday. The following Saturday Sunshine. is the 27th. Hmm? The following Saturday is the 27th. We're getting longer days. Uh, is sunset late enough that we could get it in at the end of a work day like we do during the spring and summer? By the 27th, really. it may be. No. <laughs> we'll lose people out there. I don't know. Sunset's <laughs> around 5 o'clock. Right. Okay, well, Saturday is the only option then. Why don't we go around and see who is not available on the next two or three upcoming Saturdays, and we'll narrow it down that way. This Saturday is out because of weather. <coughs> Mr. I'm Chairman? not available on the last Saturday of the month. Yes, please. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, the Fitzpatricks are going to be gone uh, the 28th through the 6th. And if the board didn't mind, I'd like to schedule it maybe the weekend after the 6th, because uh, I can't get a survey crew out to get it all staked out by this coming Saturday. I'd like to have, I want to make sure I have it staked out appropriately for the board. Um, if we could, it probably seems like maybe the best approach would be to try to do it sometime after the 6th. I'd, I'd like to have Joel here when we walk it. March 13th. March 13th. How's that looking for the majority of the oh, board? Oh, it's just great. I have, I have to check my calendar. I yeah. think that's all right. That works? Yeah. Schedule a public sidewalk on March 13th. Yes. 8 o'clock in the morning, too early? <coughs> yep. On a Saturday? I've got a notification that's so far away. I'll notify yep. No, that's all right. Is 8 too early? Therefore, we don't lose that sad day? 8.30. 8.30. Thank you, Mr. Emery. March, <laughs> okay. 8, 8, March, March 13th. 13th. Oh, 13. Once again, March 13th at 8.30. And where are we going to meet? Three days before the next um, May I, su may I uh, suggest that we meet down here on Hemlock Hill Road? The reason I ask it is there is a turnout here, and there's some room to park in this area. Um, and then we can walk back in through. Um, if, if we could meet here and then <clears throat> don't take so many cars. That would be good. <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. As far as the planning board members go, why don't we meet here at about 8.15 or so, 8.20, somewhere around there, and we'll try to just take two cars up. Not necessary, but if you live in this side of town, let's do that. And dress appropriately. It will be muddy. Rugged terrain. Yeah, it's a rugged site, isn't it? Yes. Very rugged terrain. I, I you might want, well, it depends on if, how much snow cover and if it's wet, but um, it's, it's fairly steep terrain in some locations, and uh, it's, once we get up into the site, there's some ledge, so I don't think you'll be into much mud in some of the areas, but, uh, you know, if we want to walk down in around the wetlands, if you'd like to see that area, then yes, I'd wear boots if you want to get down into the wetland areas. Please remember the public is invited to our sidewalks. We will not have our recording secretary there with us. Uh, so if you have any concerns or questions that come up during the sidewalks, please respond in writing or email to our town planner, Maureen. And anything she receives, we all get a copy of. So it's the best way to keep in touch with us. Any concerns from the board as to what type of staking you want? Just corner lines of the lots and the center line of the road would be enough? And just okay. the corner lines as they approach the road would be enough. More okay, less. we will certainly do that. And just flag it with what number lot it is, and that way we won't get lost. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Emery. Uh, I had several questions as a follow-up to Go right the, ahead. that vote. Um, one has to do with the, the wetland flagging. It, it seems to me that the... Uh, um, 
RP1 wetland, the Sebago Mucky Peat, has an extraordinarily straight line that abuts the sub that uh, is nearer the subdivision. Is, is that flagged clearly in the field? Uh, I will have to ask my soil scientist. Um, thinking ahead, just so uh, in case these issues aren't raised, uh, there isn't an existing conditions plan per se in the set, and um, I just drove in the, the easy access uh, on my way to work this morning, and, and it is heavily treed, and there's a lot of site features. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears from the plan that the site is literally going to be clear cut uh, according to the grading plan. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the houses that are there now and similar to my neighborhood, um, builders were able to work around all of that. I know you have a lot of earthwork to make those sites usable. If there is consideration for that, would you just be sure that that's indicated on the plan okay. and be ready to explain how you're going to do all of that earthwork either simultaneously or <coughs> why, why there aren't uh, buffers between the lots? Uh, I do enjoy seeing all of the uh, grading shown in plan view for all of the sites. I think that's very helpful. I understand that may not be the final building location, but it's uh, very helpful. And eventually, I would strongly suggest, um, given what's happened over in the Brentwood West neighborhood, happened about five or six years ago regarding neighbors and uh, abutting wetlands, is that if anyone moves into these lots in five years, they're the ones that abut the wetlands, and particularly the buffers where we have the 100-foot setback, they won't have a clue as to where their, their limit of clearing is, uh, and it, it would be very important, I think, on the final plat plan to have some meets and bounds description of whatever limitations there are to one using either the lot or uh, the developer during construction. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Yes, Mr. Parkhurst. Motion. <clears throat> Go right ahead, please. Be it further ordered that the application be tabled to the regular March 16, 1999 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Thank you. A second, second. please? Second. Thank you, Nancy. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Carries unanimously. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Any further questions from the applicant? Uh, I think we're all set. March 13, 830 in the morning. We'll uh, stake the center line of the road and label the lot corners for you. And March 16th would be the public hearing. Is that is that correct? To the members of the public who are here tonight, all these plans that you've seen us fumbling with this evening, they're available for your review at the town office. If you have any questions or further concerns, please write the planning board to Kara Maureen, our town planner here at the town office. All of her correspondence gets forwarded to us. Thank you for attending this evening. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? A second? Thank you. All those in favor? Home we go. Okay. Thank you.